I guess we can get rolling then. So Gina, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I feel like I've done it all in recruiting, starting with um, agency, of course. I feel like that's every recruiter's rite of passage. I've done uh, recruited for private companies, public companies, pre-IPO companies. Um, but yeah, when I first started, I was in HR and uh, just, you know, I was I was having to fire people, but then I got to hire people and it was just so much more fun for me, obviously. And um, so I decided that I, you know, wanted to make a career out of recruiting solely, not in HR. Um, so yeah, so then I, I got a job at an agency and I did that for a year. Um, and I'll never forget making an offer to, it was a forklift driver for $12 an hour. And he cried when I extended the offer to him. And he's like, you have no idea what this means to me. I'm going to be able to feed my family. And he was, I was just like, oh my God, like, that's when it kind of hit me. Like I'm changing people's lives. Um, so I've been in recruiting ever since and absolutely love it. But, uh, I definitely find my niche. It's in the like tech, uh, high growth startup pre IPO phase. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And so what draws you to that type of company? Oh man, it's nuts. It's chaotic. It's ever changing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy, but, um, it's fun. It's energizing. It's motivating. Um, what I love is that you can really add value and you can make an impact. And I love just being a part of building. Um, so I've been at Human Interest for two years now. And looking back, it's just insane how far we've come. Um, but we still have so much to do. So, you know, the future, you know, I'm excited because there's it's just nonstop. Like we are learning as we go. We love to say that we're building the rocket ship as we're flying to the moon. We truly are. Um, so just knowing that there's still so much for me to do, you know, I know I'm never going to get bored. I'm always going to be challenged. Sure. And so it's just an exciting space to be in. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And I, you know, we're a human interest client. I don't know if we talked about we that yet, but we definitely yeah. are. We've awesome. been one um, for, I don't even know how many years now, but it's it's been interesting to see the company grow because you know, when we were signing up with you guys, it had to be at least three, four, maybe five years oh, ago. Wow. You guys were pretty yeah, young, really. just starting to grow, maybe like 30, 40, 50 people or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and so it's been interesting to see, you know, huge rounds of funding, yes. huge amount of growth. And then now, you know, we've known each other for a few years and I saw that you were at Human Interest and was like, wow, we got to yeah. talk and hear what you guys are up to. Over yeah, there. yeah, it's crazy. Um, I, so I started uh, just about two years ago and it was the week that we announced our Series D funding and the week that we hit unicorn status with our billion dollar valuation. So it was really a cool feeling. I'm like, all right, I, I found I found a good place to be. And it's mission driven, too, which is really exciting so you know just a lot of success mission driven industry disruptor like it, we've got it all yeah yeah and you joined at the Definitely right time did. to get on the rocket yeah. ship and and help fuel that growth with that series d yeah. funding yeah so tell me about your role there and what the team looks like that you're on yeah sure i'm one of the um i'm a talent acquisition lead there um so we are part of the broader people team led by our senior director um, there's three tech recruiters. There's two of us that are responsible for revenue, customer success, GNA, basically every, anything that's not product and tech. And then we do use um, a third party partner um, for all of our sales recruiting because you just never know what's going to happen there. It ebbs and flows and uh, it's hard for, you know, it's far, hard for us to kind of manage that. So we use them. Yeah, so it sounds like five people solely focused on recruiting. Yeah, yeah, there's five of us. And what's the volume look like? How many roles are you guys recruiting oh, gosh. for? Um, it, it's 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 high volume on our side, especially on the on the revenue and customer success side. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's months where we're filling, you know, up to ten per month each. Sometimes it's a mm -hmm. little bit slower, but um, in the two years I've been here, I've filled about 150 positions so it's a wow. lot yeah that yeah that's 
That's an awesome accomplishment yeah. and feeling that you're having that type of impact on the organization. Like I've got a hundred yeah. plus people here in this business in just two yeah. years. Um, so you really are making impact on growth, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think I started, we were around 500 employees and now we're at 830. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Is there something that draws you to recruiting for the revenue roles or is that just kind of where you found yourself at this um, point in Definitely time? drawn to it. I am not a tech person obviously have issues opening zoom and every everything i'm surprised i can open my computer every day yeah i'm definitely not a tech person my mind doesn't work that way so i'm i'm more drawn to talking to candidates you know just in the revenue space customer service um i was uh thrown into gna recruiting uh this year actually and I started recruiting lawyers and accountants and um, I was, I was nervous at first um, because I don't speak that language, but it's been, I've actually really enjoyed it. It was, it was a challenge. It was something different because I've always done like revenue. Yeah. Um, But yeah, Yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm liking it. So um, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of, kind of my niche. I love high volume recruiting. Um, That's what I've always done. And Um, you know, I just, I like being busy. I'm not, um, you know, I just, I feel, I don't know. I think it's more of a sense of accomplishment for me too. Like, you know, filling 10 roles per month as opposed to one, even though don't get me wrong, those are extremely difficult searches on the tech side. And I know a lot of work goes into it. Um, so I know there's a great sense of accomplishment there, but that's just, that's just kind of what I've been drawn to. And for the G and A roles, what steps did you take in order to learn more about those positions? Because you said you were nervous and starting out yeah. hiring for those because you haven't done it before. So where do you start? Google. <laughs> Lots of Google searches. Like what's the difference between a controller and a staff accountant? Um, you, you know, it's just uh, also, you know, of course, my hiring managers, you know, I take a very consultative approach to recruiting Um, so I work with them and we do kickoff calls before every search. And so, and I just, I tell them, you know, I don't care. I tell them like accounting was one of my worst subjects in school. I'm no accountant. They said, please, I know these are stupid (laughs) questions, but you have to help me learn so I can understand. And I mean, they understand, you know, they ask questions about recruiting. That's what I do every day. I ask questions about accounting. That's what they do every day. So we're, you know, very supportive and we, help each other and teach each other and we learn. Yeah, that's great. So it sounds like combination of being resourceful, being a good Googler, and then having structure around getting with your hiring managers to get your questions answered, but also going into those meetings and like, you know, coming in a little vulnerable saying like, hey, you need to teach me. I need to learn more about this versus coming in and just saying like, give me the job description and I'll go figure it out. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely vulnerable. I have no problem saying, I don't know anything about this. I don't understand this. Or what does this acronym mean? And yeah, so that's, that's what I like about human interest. And, you know, really most roles I've had, you know, the hiring managers are incredibly supportive and understanding of that. Yep. And you mentioned, you know, typically, you know, maybe you're working on 10 different jobs a month, which does that mean you're supporting as many as 10 different hiring managers at one yeah. time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how do you keep track of everything? How do you stay on the same page with all those people when you're working all those jobs simultaneously? Yeah. I mean, you have to have some really great project management skills to manage the hiring managers and then all the candidates that are in the pipeline and what stages they're in. So, I mean, we use Greenhouse, which is great. Um, I, you know, I've used some robust ATSs in my career, but I've never not had my own personal spreadsheet. So I always have a spreadsheet of my hiring managers, my candidates, where they are in the process. Do I need to follow up with them? You know, what's what date did I last talk to them? So I like having everything on one page for myself rather than just in the ATS. Um, And then I do, you know, weekly check-ins with all of my hiring managers too. Even if it's just 10, 15 minutes, like this is where I'm at. This is what's going on. These are some roadblocks, some challenges. And, you know, we can just have that time to talk it through. Got it. And do you 
pre-schedule those when you're starting to hire for the role like they know it's going to be yeah, on the calendar i tell week. them like hey i'm going to put a quick touch base some weeks we might not have to talk some weeks we might need longer shorter you know but i'll, I'll put 15 minutes on their calendar every week just to have that you know just that little update and also to build a relationship yeah. too because we are remote um and that gives us an opportunity to you know just connect and maybe maybe we just talk about what we did for the weekend for that 15 minutes for sure yeah because you don't have the you know hallway pass exactly. by where they're like hey gina how's it going for that sdr role right, you're yeah, recruiting for right. us it's very easy to hide um, when you're in a remote environment but yeah no no hiding when you're a recruiter at human interest that's for sure yeah, so tell me a little bit more about the structure you have with your hiring managers. You've got the hiring manager kickoff meeting, which is before you go out and start recruiting for the role, and then you've got these weekly check-ins. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell me a little bit more? Let's start with the kickoff meeting. What does that look like? What are you guys talking about? What are you figuring out? Yeah, so we've actually, we're, we're kind of in the process of revamping the way we look at this. So we, Greenhouse allows us, um, it's something new, maybe about six months ago, they, um, incorporated kickoff forms um, to the system. And so we've developed a kickoff form that we send to the hiring managers prior to the kickoff call. And we have have found this to be really helpful because it gets some of those like must haves, need to haves, you know, why is this open? You know, those types of questions, like do you need a specific time zone? Um, it just kind of gets that, those basic questions out of the way. So our kickoff meetings can be more productive and strategic. So I found them to be really helpful because I'll review that kickoff form prior to the kickoff call. So I, you know, I've got the job description, I've got the kickoff form. So I've got a really good amount of knowledge prior to that call. So then I use the kickoff call to really dive into some questions that I might have, um, but really what we've been using the kickoff calls for lately is to come up with a very intentional and thoughtful interview process. Um, this is something that we're really working on building out. Um, there hasn't been a lot of structure in the past and we need to do a better job of, about giving those resources to our managers. And it's so great that we can do it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, for example, just being thoughtful about who's on the interview panel why they're on the interview panel, what questions are they gonna ask? You know, a lot of um, interviewers, they don't know how to interview. And so going back to the candidate experience, the candidate might have four interviews and they're asked the same exact questions in every step because the managers, they don't know. So so we've, we're trying to get better about that. Um, so I'll really ask like, why is this person on the interview panel? What kind of um, value are they gonna add? what attributes or characteristics are they going to focus on? And then after the hiring manager and I figure that out, then I send a recap email to the entire interview panel to kind of summarize what the hiring manager and I talked about. And that kind of proactively aligns us so that everybody's aware of their role in the interview process. I'll even provide interview questions at times just to make it really easy for them and to provide that resource. But then everyone has a focus area um, and it's really great. And everyone knows, you know, what step they are in the interview process and what they need to focus on. So that's how I kick it off. Yeah. And I think aligning on that up front is super helpful because then if there is any misalignment, you can address it up front, right? When you send your summary out and people are like, uh, not so sure about that or, you know, I'm confused about this. You can address exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, we've all been there before where you get to the end of the interview process and everyone kind of has an, a different idea of what the ideal profile should have looked like. And then you have these, you know, candidates that have gone through the process and all this wasted time. And of course, it's happened lots of times. So, so I've, I've learned that way. For sure. Yeah. And from a speed to hire standpoint, that's really critical as well, because to your point, if you don't have structure mm -hmm. and you have interviewers that are asking the same questions at different stages yep. and the candidates feeling like why am I answering these same questions again you're just wasting time because you're just adding steps redundant exactly. steps to the process yeah. that don't need to be there and then you might lose the candidate altogether because your hiring process takes right. too long yeah it all it all comes back to speed equals alignment and or alignment equals speed um and that's something 
we move a million miles a minute here. I mean, no joke. It's so fast paced. And when a manager wants to open a role, like they want it open now and they want to see candidates tomorrow. So it's been a lot of over the past two years, a lot of, a lot of training and coaching because, you know, sometimes, you know, they just want to get a job description as quick as possible to get it posted. And, you know, I got to, we've got to take some stuff back to make sure all of this stuff is, right up front otherwise it will end up wasting a ton of time in the long run yeah and that is the ultimate dilemma that every talent acquisition team especially at a fast-growing company faces is balancing speed and quality of the process so ultimately you end up with the right person that you're going to be able to retain and will you know be productive for the team so i imagine you know raising a lot of money, growing really fast. You've been there for two years. You've gone from 500-ish people to 800 plus people. There's a lot of pressure to move really, really fast, like you said. And the pressure not only from executive level and the board and from investors from the funding, but also just from the managers that they're accountable for hitting certain numbers and getting people into seats and getting them productive, especially on the revenue side. So that creates a lot of pressure. And it sounds like you've created a really nice structured process to balance speed and quality. What are some of the things that you're focused on right now specifically? Yeah. So um, really um, providing those resources to our hiring managers um, and giving them the right training that they need. Um, We're a little bit slower right now. So it's a great time to kind of go back to the basics because when I started, it was just like, fill roles, fill roles, fill roles. And so I have was able to bring in, you know, some of my my own personal best practices, but we were all moving so quickly and trying to keep up as much as possible that we just, you know, we kind of did our own thing and kept our heads down and recruited like crazy. Um, but now it's really nice that we're able to take some time to step back. And so we're working on um, putting together interview training so we can really you know, really hone in on um, best practices, interview skills, um, what is behavioral based interviewing and how do you, you know, how do you probe and how do you assess what, you know, the right candidates. Um, We're working on um, really structuring our internal recruitment process because it's just in the past, it's kind of like, okay, just get it done (laughs) um, type of thing. So we're really working on Um, putting some structure and some process around that. Um, We're working on, um, you know, just gathering our resources and sharing best practices. So it's kind of nice to have a little bit of downtime. I mean, I still have several roles that I'm working on. We're definitely growing, but, um, you know, it, it has tapered off a little bit and it's given us time to work on some projects, which is nice. Sure. Yeah. You can reinvest back into the recruitment process and everything that you guys are doing. And I think it's an important point that you bring up in empowering hiring managers to be an extension of the talent acquisition team, right? By coaching them, providing them with resources, helping them, you know, which types of questions to ask, how to ask those questions, how to probe and interviews, all those types of things. It makes them extensions of your team in the sense that they have these recruiting skills, even though they're not in a recruiting position, And at scale, that makes your job a lot easier because you don't have to do everything, right? I don't have to build out every single interview kit or Mm -hmm. guide and give questions for every round of interview because you've got people that are trained internally that don't sit in a recruiting seat that can contribute to recruiting in a meaningful way. Yeah, absolutely. We want to, you know, hold them accountable um, to making these hiring decisions. You know, it doesn't just come from the recruiter. Um, so, yeah, it's it's so important, but you can't have those expectations if, you know, us as a TA team isn't providing the training and the resources that they need. So I love that we're, you know, making that a focus um, in this last half of the year. I think it'll make a huge difference and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, that's great. So. Can you take me through, at least maybe let's focus on the revenue org, what the typical hiring process looks like with you guys? What are the different stages? Yeah, sure. So um, so we try to keep it to four. Um, you know, sometimes there's less, sometimes there's more. I really suggest, highly, highly suggest that there's no more than four, but sometimes there's hiring managers that um, want a little bit more, uh, which is fine. 
more flexible, but uh, it always starts with the recruiter screen. And we spend, so as a recruiter, I spend about 30 minutes um, with each candidate. And the first 10 minutes is me talking and telling them all about the company, the growth, the accolades, the awards, the culture, and really giving them a good intro to who human interest is and you know, proactively answering a lot of the questions that they might have. And um, then we do, you know, a high level overview. Sometimes the hiring manager will have some specific knockout questions that I'll ask. Sometimes it's just really high level, me digging in and, you know, confirming experience, um, you know, identifying any red flags, confirming comp. Um, and then, you know, I always leave time, of course, um, for questions at the end. But we assess all candidates and we do move really quickly. So I always try to have like a 24 to 40 hour turnaround between each interview. Uh, we do have recruiting coordinators. We actually call them candidate experience coordinators who are amazing and they save my life every day um, because they're the ones that are working on all of the scheduling and everything behind the scenes. And, you know, if there's any issues, they're also there for the candidate, you know, because I'm on the phone all day. So there's nothing worse than, you know, being on a, the, the phone with a candidate and then having another candidate, you know, email me because they can't get on a Zoom or, you know, the passcode's not working. So we have our candidate experience coordinators there. And, um, you know, they're just so intuitive and just they're, like, they're just an extension of our team. So that's awesome. So they do all of the scheduling. Um, Typically, we have a hiring manager interview first, and then the leadership interview, the leader of that org will go last. And then in between, it can be any combination of a peer interview, stakeholder, or maybe someone that they'll be working with from a cross-functional um, perspective. So um, try to keep it to four. And then, um, and then once an offer goes out, we have a workplace experience team who picks it up from there and really ensures a seamless transition from recruitment to onboarding. Um, they are amazing. They will be in touch with the candidate from offer to start date, just with, you know, agenda, here's what to expect. Um, you know, they have information coming from all over the place. You know, they have to, you know, they have their background check. They've got to do their onboarding through PayCor. They've got to, um, you know, do everything that they need to get started. So we make it very clear that these are the steps and try to make it as less complex as possible. And then they're responsible for the three-day onboarding, which we call high starts. And uh, it's a cohort model that we really value because it gives them the chance to really work together and network. And um, it's a combination of, you know, self-learning, live learning, um, buddy breaks. We do, um, you know, of course, there's a ton of logistics that they have to take care of, but we also have our leaders that join live every two weeks, every time we have an onboarding class um, to introduce themselves and tell them a little bit about their role and um, what what they do and why they joined Human Interest. So I think it's amazing that they take the time to do that and our new hires um, really, really value that and get excited about it. So it really is, it's a great process. It's very seamless. Um, so it's something we're really proud of. Yeah, I, I love the candidate experience coordinator and workplace experience roles, yeah. I think. Those are really critical to providing a white glove type of experience for your candidates. And I'm glad you brought up cohorts because that was going to be my follow up question is that it sounds like you're bringing on groups of people yeah. at a time, which makes those workplace experience folks even that much more important because you might have somebody that got and accepted an offer weeks mm -hmm. ago uh, before their start date. And so you need to keep them engaged during that downtime exactly. if you will um yeah. yeah yeah that's great and how much do you emphasize you know the people in those types of roles a candidate experience coordinator specifically are you like communicating that you have those people to candidates throughout mm -hmm. the process and this is what their role is and this is what they're going to help yeah, you with? Yeah, absolutely. So um, at the end of my um, phone interview, if I know that I'm going to be moving forward with them, I'll definitely let them know, you know, this, here's the name of the candidate experience coordinator. She'll be reaching out to you next. Um, you know, I, I always 
set expectations and let them know what's coming next. And I say, you know, we work together, so you can email either of us um, or both of us at the same time. But um, yeah, they definitely know that that candidate experience coordinator is going to be um, the one that they're mostly communicating with after my initial phone interview with them. Yep, that's mm-hmm. awesome. And tell me about, it sound, first of all, it sounds like you guys have an awesome hiring yeah, process, yeah. very smooth and quick, um, which is great. Tell me about, though, in growing so fast and needing to hire so many people, what are some of the biggest challenges you guys face? They've changed throughout. I mean, it's been, sure, it's been of course. such a wild couple of years. So, um, I mean, last year was crazy. You had to move so fast because it was so competitive. People were, you know, withdrawing left and right because they had other offers or they'd be you know, reaching out to me and say, hey, Gina, human interest is my top choice, but I've got these other offers on the table. Can you move a little faster? And I mean, it was it was insane how competitive it was. Now, completely different story. Um, there's so much talent out there. And um, it's, you know, we'll get, we'll get hundreds of applications for some of our roles. So it's really, you know, the challenge there is, you know, just really getting, getting through all of those resumes and really vetting out candidates to find out, you know, to really figure out, um, you know, where that top talent is and getting them through the process. I mean, we're still moving quickly, uh, but it's, you know, now it's back to being an employer's market as opposed to a candidate's market. Sure. And so as a recruiting team, you guys have to adjust the strategy based on what the market looks like, which it sounds like you guys are doing. That's awesome. Well, this has been great. Um, I've really loved diving into your hiring process, uh, especially as a human interest client. It's always great to hear about the companies that we work with. And obviously, you and I go back a couple of years. So uh, great to hear that you're doing yeah, well. Thank you. And I appreciate me. the time and the insight. I think a lot of people are going to gain a ton of information from this. Um, so, yeah, appreciate it. Of course. It. Thank you for having me. It was fun.